There seemed to be more of the dead around than normal. He didn't know why though. In fact, Norman couldn't see any kind of pattern to the behaviour. Sometimes they were lethargic, but other times they were aggressive. Sometimes they were large in number, and other times they were wandering around in ones and twos, as if lost. In a way, Norman thought, they weren't a hell of a lot different from what they were before. They were still fat, thin, old and young, only now they were dead and fat, thin, old and young. Of course, for Norman, there was no need to study them or understand them. He saw no need for touchy-feely bullshit when dealing with these bastards. He just needed to be ready for them and then kill them, and he had no problem with that. In fact, when it came down to it, in order to survive, Norman had no problem doing just about anything. Their street rolled down a hill, just like many streets off the Lisburn Road in Belfast. Tall angular houses faced a row of two ups and downs, shielding them from the sun. The off-license across the road stood in a corner, forming a crossroads. It seemed out of place to Norman, a bit like a priest being at a brothel. Shifty looking, embarrassed, dark red windows frowning in the shadows as if hiding some shameful secret. Norman watched Lark bolt across the road towards the off-license. The boy could sprint, Norman had to give him that. Of course, God knows what he was wired up on. Speed, ecstasy, coke. There had to be something flowing through his veins. Norman hadn't scored a hit in days and he was feeling all the worse for it. His bones felt tired, lethargic. He was weary and feeling every second of his age. He made a mental note to go through the house when he got back and find a little of whatever tattoo was no doubt hiding. The first threat was taken out from a shot from above. Literally. Norman watched the corpse fall before he even got near it. The damn thing looked confused, disappointed even, as if its neck had split in two, pieces of cartilage spreading across the road in a bloody mess. Norman looked behind him up at the window, catching a glimpse of George. He raised his thumb in thanks. He worried for George, of course. Since he joined the force some years back, Norman had always been his partner, and to be honest, he hadn't liked George at first. He wasn't like Norman. George had been more of a career-driven kind of guy from the very start. Keen to get ahead, score some stripes. A big fan of paperwork, his own and Norman's. Also a big fan of touchy feeling policing. He went far because of it, of course, and he was a good sergeant, Norman thought to himself. He knew when to turn a blind eye, even when he didn't agree with what was going on. He's bloody soft though, he needed looking out for, especially in this new world. Especially since another attacker, this one an old lady, reached for him. He could tell her age by the nightdress and wrinkled skin. She had caught him off guard, grabbing the padded arm of his jacket and busily trying to sink her teeth through. Norman laughed. She must have been the hungriest bitch out there. She had no teeth, only gums writhing trying to find a grip. Hair spreaded from her head like sunstroke grass, yellow and parched. Her misty eyes showed little expression, hanging her head motionless as if she were blind. It was a pathetic display. Norman kicked her away with his steel toe cap, raising his rifle and pumping two rounds through her frail old head. It split apart like a rotten tomato, flesh, hair and gum slapping against the tarmac like projectile vomit. Norman looked over at Lark. The silly bastard was still outside the door to the office, struggling with the lock. One of the dead challenged him briefly, but the tattooed man dealt with it quickly and efficiently, raising his Glock 17 to blow a clean hole through its head, dropping it to the ground like a heavy bag of shopping. It didn't seem to bother him either, and Norman immediately felt himself respecting the man a little bit. Before long, Norman was by Lark's side, flanking around the man as he worked the lock, Picking off the most dangerous of their attackers with further flashes from the muzzle of his own HK-33. They fell immediately, the closeness of range only making their wounds all the more fatal. A couple more shots from the first floor bedroom put Ped to another few, thinning their numbers even further. Hurry up, shouted Norman impatiently. It's fucking locked from the inside, Lark said, somewhat irritated. Well, just blow it open then, Norman said, demonstrating just how by blasting the cheekbone of a young dead girl in front of him. She crumbled to the ground, reaching for her missing face, as if angry or shocked, Norman pumping another round into her for good measure. The big cop heard Lark firing once, twice, before kicking the door through. 
Both men quickly moved inside before shutting the door and then searching desperately for a suitable barricade, finally working together to push a large display of alcohol pop against the entrance, but hold the crazy back for a short while. Once the door was secure, Norman turned around to properly survey the shop. The windows were partially blackened out, meaning visibility was poor inside. Norman pulled the torch from his pocket, switched it on to shed light on the situation. It was an old school off license. Minimum decor, no frills, defiantly untidy. In fact, the place was a fucking mess. Smashed glass littered the floor, the reek of alcohol heavy in the air. A single body lay across the counter, its head having exploded messily over the back wall. Several spent rounds of ammunition mixed in with the glass on the floor. Another body could be seen sprawled against a stack of six packs. It too was about of head. I guess someone got here before us, Norman said. No shit, Sherlock, Lark muttered under his breath. But Norman let it pass, simply pressing the torch against his lips to silence the other man. He had heard something. No, maybe it was something he felt more than heard. Something beyond sound, yet intense enough to feel like sound. This was another sense, a sense of danger honed by years of policing. He moved sm- slowly through the shop, taking care of the stand in the glass. Everything was stained, tarnished, unusable. He wouldn't put his lips to any of the bottles or cans left in the aisles. It was as if some huge dying monster had ripped the roof off and puked its bloody guts all over the place. Norman had only seen this kind of mess once before, when he'd been the first on the scene of a brutal bomb blast in Belfast. Bombs were vicious things, of course, unapologetically messy. Halfway across the spacious shop floor, Norman looked back to find Lark closely following him. He pointed the storeroom door further through an archway towards the back of the room. If they were going to find anything usable, it'd be in there. Of course, Norman was convinced there was something else in there also. Both men approached the storeroom from different sides, covering each other as if an automatic pilot. They seemed to have put the differences aside suddenly, forced to work together in order to stay alive together. Team bonding with guns. Norman reached the store first, slinging his rifle around his shoulder and choosing his Glock instead to investigate. He didn't want to create a bigger mess than he had to. The place looked fucked up already. Lark was beside him, looking over and reaching for the handle of the door. He seemed to be waiting for Norman's signal. Norman nodded, raising the torch's light towards the door. Lark pulled the door wide open and Norman stepped into the room, weapon drawn with one hand, torch spinning light from the other. Inside, several of the dead turned to stare back at him, almost as if they felt intruded upon. Their empty eyes reflected the unforgiving light, cold and devoid of any feeling or emotion. A swarm of flies circled the room, excited and overstimulated. On the floor was the body of what seemed to be a soldier, given the rifle and backpack nearby. Several of the dead crowded around him on their knees, each dipping their hands and mouths into the middle of the man's open stomach as if bobbing for apples. A long string of bloody...